Good morning, folks. Uh, David Kirsten here with uh, Quantum Leap, and I got my esteemed co-host, Corey Knott. And sorry we got started a little bit late. You probably won't be getting this recording um, until later because we had some issues with Facebook Live, but um, we're happy to be here with our last broadcast of the season for Quantum Leap. And Corey, if you don't mind just introducing yourself and um, just a short introduction, because I know we're going to do a little bit of a, a run with you on your business today for a special edition. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, I'm Corey Knott, and I am co-owner of Take Wing Coaching, and I focus on business partnerships. Okay, great. And I know we talked more about your business last week, but I'm actually starting a new solopreneur podcast. I just wanted to give some folks, um, maybe mm. it's their first podcast, an opportunity to um you know, to be on a broadcast. And um, so I appreciate you kind of being willing to, you know, be the, be the pilot run here. So um, <laughs> it, it's really a, it's called solopreneur and fo other folks qualified too, who are partnerships or small business, you know, we will be kind of stating that as we do the intro and we're, we're still kind of working through a few of the details, but it's really aimed at being a, eight to 10 minute broadcast, short and sweet, five questions. I say two minutes or less per question. And it's actually currently available within BNI if you want to be on the bot broadcast uh, by qualified referral. So uh, um, feel free to share it around. I'll share your broadcast around Corey and we'll see if anybody else is um, interested in it. It is a paid offering. We are going to be doing kind of um, kind of friends and family editions uh, such as this one. So, um, but I just wanted to welcome you to the first solopreneur broadcast. And uh, my name is David Kirsten. I'm your host, and I'm excited to talk to um, Corey Knott, who's actually a solopreneur, a business partner, and uh, really a long time uh, leading business coach in the East Bay area. And we're going to talk a little bit about his business and I'm actually going to skip his official bio today because he's still updating that, but we will put that in the show notes and I'm going to turn it over to you, Corey, just uh, right away. If you don't mind just telling us about your story and what you do. Yeah, I am. <clears throat> um, as I said, I am a business coach with a focus on partnerships, which is, a little different than most business coaches, and I'd say I'm more of a business life coach because I'm really focused on the mindset, the communications, creating um, a good relationships and <clears throat> good healthy relationships within a business context. And I started my first business in 1998 as a consultant. So I was doing software development, technology, and so on. And I actually had a partner at that time. And he was uh, not a, he brought in some business, but there was many other problems that I had with him as a, a partner. But overall, I had a successful launch of my software business, got some really good uh, clients over time, eventually went off on my own. And for the next 10, 15 years, I was contracting, consulting, doing technology consulting, software development, things like that, mostly for small businesses, sometimes solopreneurs like you like to talk to, and sometimes those uh, corporate departments or small government departments as well. And I got involved in networking around 2003, met my wife in there, who eventually is who's now my business partner. And we got coaching in 2008. And I love the, my coach then became like a mentor for me, suggested I get more personal development. And so I did that. I went to the company that she recommended, who was very involved in BNI at the time. And I worked with them for several years, you know, as a student in their programs. And I just, it was such a transformative process for me and felt like this is something that, you know, I was, I would be good at and I wanted to try. And they offered a, a training program and I went with that and I decided I wanted to switch my career and my mentor came back to me and said, come work with me on my coaching practice. And that was all around relationship coaching that involved helping business owners build better relationships, mostly for marketing purpose, right? As it is the, the networking and the referrals, but over time, more people came to me for partnership coaching and I've developed a, a methodology that works really well for partners to work together at, yeah. 
that. And that's really my background. Yeah. Great. And I do have a custom set of questions here that I like based on what I know about you. And I think a, a big part of what you do and who you are is what is your why? Um, for, for Right. Yeah. Cause I always talk to people about their why. And I think that's an important part of understanding why we do what we do. I, um, you know, I haven't really developed my why so much for the partnership coaching, but it's certainly pretty deep for coaching overall. And I would say that, you know, the, the, the challenges I had as a kid, one of them was that I spent a lot of time alone and not only just deeply introverted, introverted, somewhat <clears throat> sensitive, but there was a lot of family dynamics that made things very difficult for me. <clears throat> but I always had just that one best friend. Um, you know, I made one and then as school things changed or whatever, my life changed, I would make another one. And that lasted me pretty much until high school but I was always sort of flying blind it was just somebody I got along with and we we hung out <clears throat> and then I started falling into a really bad crowd in high school um really I would say just screwed up my life from 18 to about 26 uh it was a big mess but I also had good jobs and good mentors and I think because of that I came through some very difficult times but then as I started my business and hanging out, I, again, I started making that sort of one friend who would be like a business partner at that point because I was starting businesses. And the challenge was, is I wanted somebody to work with, but I wasn't finding good people and I wasn't making necessarily good choices. And, and so that would come back on me. Nothing ever big blew up, but I could see where it could go wrong. And as I started looking at helping partners, as, I, as Gail came to me after we married, so this is my wife, who's my co, co-owner of Take Wing Coaching now. When she first came to me, she uh, about partnering. I said no. I didn't want her helping me in the software business because I was afraid of losing my autonomy. She's much more in uh, charge of things, right? And I didn't know how necessarily to stand up for myself. And so that got me thinking, though, because of the value that could she bring to the business. What was I missing? So when we started the coaching business together we decided to get coaching to help us you know see where our um, barriers would be our conflicts would be and we already had the relationship coaching experience so we brought that all together to i think have a very good strategic plan and help us get along very harmoniously in our business we, we have a lot of fun and i don't think we would have had that if we didn't have that so that coaching and that's what i bring to people now i want to make partnerships fun valuable rewarding and um, because there's so much value that people can bring to business and to life by having a good partner. Yeah. And this, this might reiterate a bit about what you said, but if you have anything to add about what makes you unique in your field as a partnership coach, I know your story is unique. You're actually in a business partnership, but is there anything else kind of why folks should look at you for business partnership coach? Or, you know, I, I don't know of any that many uh, partnership coaches out there but if there are any others uh what? there's one or two that i've that i found online over time um a lot of them have more backgrounds in psychology which makes sense and because i think that kind of training requires it there's not most business coach training most life coach training is one-to-one -one. and in fact one of the big guys in the in the industry that i looked at they're like we don't train people to do groups I trained to do groups. I spent a year learning how to work within the group context and then relationship coaching from incentive for six years working in that and helping people have better business relationships and, you know, key structures for working together, not just for referrals, but just the overall strategy of being good collaborative partners. And so and now taking it into the co-creation, developing a methodology for synthesizing those vision, the values, the mission, all those things that so that each person feels like they're fully heard and fully invested in the business, right? There's not one person who's more, um, more of the business than the other. I mean, they can structure things that way, but it's got to be intentional, right? Most people go into partnerships without a lot. They have an intention to build a business, but they don't have a lot of intentions for the partnership. So intention is a big thing and that all rolls into it. So what really makes me unique is this ability to work with multiple people and treat them as equals who all deserve to be heard. And that's not necessarily an easy thing for coaches. I think it was the one thing when we got coached, 
that bothered me about our coach is he was playing favorites to a certain extent and, and also pushing some culture. Um, a lot of coaches come from a corporate background, so they tend to think people have to kind of fit into a mold versus be unique. And I'm okay if somebody wants to fit into a mold, I'll help them with that. But I think most people want to do things their way. And with a partner, they just have to learn to do it their way with somebody who's you know got a say in it as well. Yeah, great. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, working in groups, uh, that's a, such a valuable skill. And um, what, just to give people a little heads up about what the process looks like for working with you or maybe getting started to, 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 to work with your partnership program. Yeah, I have kind of three ways to approach people. Coaching is a challenging thing sometimes for people to accept, especially if they're fairly new to the whole idea, the more and more people are getting coached in the corporate environment. So they're a little more open to the idea that um, maybe it's, it's helpful for them. But uh, I start off, you know, there's, there's, I have three offerings the, the the simple ones to get into aside from just an initial consultation is one, I do a consultative package. There are many things to think about when forming a partnership. And so I can kind of help them dive through the clutter and figure out what's really important to the way they structure things, right? How are they gonna do their partnership agreement, their contingencies, you know, prepare for, you know, problems that might arise. If their spouses, they have unique issues. If their in-laws have unique issues. If their friends, they have unique issues. So I can help them sort that all out. So then they can go to attorneys and other people to um, do the more expensive part that you probably don't wanna pay for an attorney to do all that consulting with you. It gets very expensive. I am, I, I don't charge nearly as much as they do. And I have a broader range of resources and information. And then the other option I have is I have a unique assessment tool for helping people work together. So I can assess their mindset and help them find where the conflicts are most likely to arise as two people trying to work together. And we, that is a fairly easy, it's, multi-hour it's it's a just a couple of hours of coaching but we really get close to 20 hours of coaching inside those two hours it's really cool and um and from there actually we can kind of determine whether they're going to need a full-on you know coaching package or if maybe they can stumble through it pretty well because of what they know about each other now and then yeah. the, the full-on package is a year-long very individualized um, and then synthesized strategic planning process. Yeah. Okay, great to hear. And we will put your contact info in the comments. And last question of the day for you, who is your ideal client? Who are you looking to work with out there? Yeah, I really like working with people who already know each other. And generally they want, they, they love, like, so they're spouses, right? Or partners, you know, domestic partners, or they really like each other. Um, so, you know, family members or maybe people who are close in some way. And so ultimately they're designed to protect that relationship, right? They, they have that relationship and maybe there's even family harmony involved. They want to protect that relationship. They want to run a business. They want to maintain their own autonomy as well, because we as business owners like to be autonomous and, and have control, but two people trying to do that has challenges. So those are my favorite people to work with where there's a, there's, I don't want to call it baggage, right? It's more like there's a, there's a heavy load and there's a lot to risk, not just financially, but also emotionally. Excellent. Well, we look forward to putting the updated bio in the comments and also uh, some contact info if people want to reach out. And I want to thank you, Corey, for coming on for the first edition of uh, Solopreneur. Hey, Thanks yeah. for joining us. Okay, so that we're we're still gonna have a couple things we'll finish this broadcast with for for Quantum Leap because it is our last edition. I just wanted to. I was thinking about looking ahead to the fall, and I think sometimes it's better to just kind of sit with it for a couple months, take a few months off. We'll reconnect. We've actually talked about if a few, at least a few different things that we want to do that are kind of would be new and innovative, I think, but I want to kind of um, do that. And then we'll, maybe we'll go to lunch in a month or two and uh, kind of pick it, p pick it up then. But I, I did offhand, I did want to say a couple more things that we've already talked about is just 
breaking new ground in some additional areas or doing more in some of the areas that we've really liked before. I think, um, you know, the book study, I've, I really enjoyed to get some more books featured, um, the business partnerships, you know, I, th I thought you, we've kind of started, uh, with those, uh, business coaching, you know, there's that great Donald Miller book I was telling you about that just came out on business coaching. I feel like, um, there's some more put room to run there. Uh, of course, leadership, business marketing, and then networking, drilling down on more networking. I know you mentioned mind sonar too, that you're have some folks interested in doing mind sonar. So I was just curious if there's anything we should kind of um, bookmark right now as additional areas for quantum leap that or things that you'd like to see for next season. Yeah. I, um, I would also like to see some more new faces. Um, you know, there's there's definitely some people new in BNI, and there's always. I, I think I think one I like it when we have people on who inspire others, right? You know, it's like wow, you know, these people are in business, and I there's definitely a lot of people out there who are looking to do that. So, um, or just feeling like they're not sure sometimes if they're doing the right thing. Uh, I know I've been in that situation, and uh, you know maybe just some more resources that. I think are more complex for people. I mean, you know, you have Lawrence on, which is great because there's so much to know about graphic design and it's hard to know sometimes the value of what a designer can bring. And, um, you know, there's a number of people that I'd like to see that I've been running into as, as research because I had questions and I didn't always get them answered. And yeah, you, know, you can Google this stuff, but you just get sold a bunch of things that don't make a lot of sense. For instance, trademarking, right? You have quantum leap. I have, Take Wing. Take Wing is now in the trademark office and maybe in about four or five months, we will have Take Wing as a trademark for, you know, business instruction and coaching. And I can use it, you know, Take Wing coaching. I can use Take Wing as the, you know, this um, trademarked uh, title, right? And, you know, for our business. And that's really cool, but I had no idea how to go about it until I met a trademark lawyer that just specializes in small business. And, um, you yeah, know, so. we got to have one of those attorneys on. I know you'd mentioned Brian yeah. Ripley, but we uh, those attorneys are so important for small business, and they're they tend to be pretty busy if they're good too. <laughs> needless to say, <laughs> well, I, I do know a few, and we know a few. There's some in BNI, and you know the trademark people. They some of them, you know, uh, they're opening small practices, and and they're trying to help others, and we can help them kind of explain the benefits and also how they got started in that. You know, maybe that's a, I think people who have niches are really kind of cool. Like the, the partnership coaching or the, the life coaching, the more niched people are, I think, you know, we're in a world that's kind of moving into niches. People are looking for things and looking to do things and they don't really, they feel like they got to do that wide net. And um, how can we help people be more specific and, um, get the best yeah so I'd, yeah. Like to, I'd like to see more about that but i mean i think that's where there's quantum leaps in business is when you get clear on who it is you serve and, and what you're doing and creating a vision yeah yeah i hear you one one thing that we've done with rotary is that rotary mastermind but i'd love to kind of do some more live small group work and then maybe talk about that some way on the air here. So sure. we're going to look at having you do something with uh, rotary and uh, some, but you know, that's a great, um, I just feel like there's so much synergy there. And Jesse Schmidt was telling me I use, that's one of my favorite words, of course, but um, anytime you can get other people kind of inspiring each other, I think it's exciting, especially since this big lull that, covid's created at times and people connecting so yeah i think you know we're finally kind of coming out of that but then we come into the recession and um you know no matter what anybody says things are definitely in a in a, in a weird state and it's not easy you know out there and uh, there's gonna be a lot of people starting businesses and looking for you know knowledge on how to do it and it's a it's a big mindset shift to go from being an employee to a business owner and, you know, running gigs or doing whatever you have to do. And I would like to see people, you know, make that mind, that mindset shift is part of your quantum leap, right. Until you kind of go from being like, I need somebody to feed me to, I need to figure out how to feed myself and, you know, break free of that nine to five mentality. Um, 
it's it it's can be difficult, but there's a lot of people out there trying to do it. So I think we have a good resource for that. Yeah, definitely. And I know you've some of the seminars I've attended with you before. I think you're very good at um, having the, those small group settings or, you know, very it's something that B&I does very well, too. I think, uh, yeah. you know, Mike and Don. And so, um, well, I mean, they are my mentors are the ones who are, you know, started me down that path. And uh, yeah. Like yeah yeah we i know we have a session in a week or two so um we'll we'll put the photos from that as we um but we'll um we'll good we'll 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 connect about this stuff more and um we'll you know our current plans will resume at the end of september we already have it scheduled so we're gonna enjoy our break and kind of coming back with some new people new energy new ideas i love that to kind of keep it from getting stale here and um keep it interesting so. yeah yeah there's lots of things lots of good things that we can do yeah okay very good well um i guess we'll hey, leave david. it there for today good job Thanks. putting this all together over the last year david really does all the work i don't you know i just come in and talk and probably too much and <laughs> you know, but it's david who does does all the work and gets us online and and you know develop this whole thing so um yeah cheers to david and good job and you know, if you want to do your own podcasting, do talk to David because it's a challenge to figure out how to do these things and then actually do it week to week to week. And uh, so David has a a good is a is a good uh, companion for that. But I'm sure he can also be just behind the camera if you wanted to go solo. But we'll make sure it gets done and and writes things up and helps you coordinate. So if you want to, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to promote you a little bit, David, here is, you know, if you'd really like to make a quantum leap in your business and podcasting is your thing, which is something I also want to do on my solo thing. Um, I think it, it, definitely talk to David about getting it started, right? Like Eric has done with the ripple effect. And I know you're working with her on that. Um, but there's so much other opportunity, I think, for people to, to do these things and work with you on how to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. You right. Are. Yeah. No, I appreciate the testimonial. That's what's been exciting is to kind of evolve it. And I, I do think you almost have to have somebody take the lead on certain things. And I actually love curating other ideas. So I kind of curate a lot of your ideas and the things you do. And then we, things that we maybe both know a little bit about, we kind of share and, you know, so, right. uh, yeah. but, but very good. Well, thanks for that. And uh, folks, we're going to leave it there for today. And again, sorry, this wasn't a live broadcast, but you're getting it here an, an hour or two late. Once we get off the air, we're leaving here at 1120 Pacific on Tuesday, April 30th. Our last show, uh, Corey and David signing off uh, for this season of Quantum Leap. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks, David. Thanks, everyone.